Several lawsuits and media spats later in the fight to gain advantage over each other, the rivalry between Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos is not looking like cooling down soon. In fact, it's getting dirtier. What exactly is the root cause of the fierce rivalry? And who is fanning the flame? Well, you'll find out in just a second, but before that, please subscribe to Future File to watch more fascinating videos on futuristic tech. The two men were bound to be industry rivals ever since the founding of Blue Origin was formed way back in the year 2000. Yes, Blue Origin was founded two years before SpaceX. In the beginning, the aerospace industry and the US government at large did not take either company seriously at all. Things started to change as SpaceX began winning contracts from NASA and began to build concepts that actually functioned. Within a similar time frame, Blue Origin was getting to work designing and working on the New Shepard. This spacecraft was designed from the get-go to be a suborbital launch vehicle. However, SpaceX went ahead leaps and bounds with a variety of different models, spacecraft and large projects, such as Starlink. New Shepard only took to outer space this year on the 20th of July. Blue Origin had recently been hard at work attempting to secure NASA contracts and not leave them for SpaceX to gobble up. Amazon.com Inc. satellite subsidiary Kuiper Systems LLC filed a scathing comment with the Federal Communications Commission, accusing Musk and his companies of flouting regulations with a general attitude that rules are for other people. Musk, SpaceX and Bezos's Kuiper Systems have presented themselves to the FCC with rival satellite constellations in low Earth orbit to provide broadband internet access. The dispute mirrors similar sniping between SpaceX and Bezos's Blue Origin LLC space company over a NASA contract to build and demonstrate a human lander system for a planned return to the moon. In relation to SpaceX's capturing of the moon contract, Blue Origin previously filed an unsuccessful protest followed by an appeal last month in the Court of Federal Claims. NASA has suspended its work on the lander project as part of its Artemis program, which is unlikely to meet the agency's 2024 deadline to return astronauts to the moon. The billionaire's dispute grew more pointed Wednesday in Amazon.com's letter to the FCC. Whether it is launching satellites with unlicensed antennas, launching rockets without approval, building an unapproved launch tower, or reopening a factory in violation of a shelter-in-place order, the conduct of SpaceX and other Musk-led companies makes their view plain. Rules are for other people, and those who insist upon or even simply request compliance are deserving of derision and ad hominem attacks. Wrote by Kuiper attorney C. Andrew Keisner, responding to a SpaceX filing last week. This attack was directed keeping in mind all of Elon Musk's business actions and strategies for all of his main ventures such as SpaceX, Starlink and Tesla Inc. Specific references relate to rocket launches and launch pad construction in South Texas, Starlink's antenna designs and Musk's decision to reopen Tesla's Fremont, California assembly plant in May 2020, defying county health officials' orders to stay at home. SpaceX responded that Amazon's eight-page diatribe was wholly irrelevant to topics before the commission. The only issue is whether SpaceX has offered adequate information about a minor change in the application for its next Starlink satellite configuration, Executive David Goldman wrote in a letter Thursday to the FCC. SpaceX is asking the agency to allow public comments on its system as a way to speed review of its application. Mariah Dodson Schumann, a corporate counsel for Kuiper, offers a much better explanation of the company's reservations against SpaceX. Amazon's complaint is that SpaceX is asking the FCC to approve two entirely different orbital configurations to be chosen later. SpaceX's novel approach of applying for two mutually exclusive configurations is at odds with both the Commission's rules and public policy, and we urge the Commission to dismiss this amendment," she wrote. Schumann says that having to grapple with two possible configurations doubles the technical effort faced by other operators, including Amazon's Kuiper system, which has yet to launch any satellites of its own. These parties will have to review interference and orbital debris concerns raised by two separate satellite configurations. Schumann's preference is that SpaceX should pick a plan and stick with it, and that approving two configurations sets a bad precedent by allowing future satellite operators to hedge their bets while creating more work for the entire industry. SpaceX filed a Starlink amendment on August 19 with the FCC, outlining its plan for the Gen 2 version of its satellite network. Starlink is the company's well-known capital-intensive project to build an interconnected internet network with thousands of satellites, known in the space industry as a constellation, designed to deliver high-speed internet to consumers anywhere on Earth. While the Starlink service is still currently in beta, the company has over 100,000 users in 14 countries, with over half a million orders or refundable deposits placed by potential customers. SpaceX has launched 1,740 Starlink satellites to date, and Gen 2 is planned to have nearly 30,000 satellites in total. 
Amazon has been working on its own satellite internet called Project Kuiper. It plans to launch 3,236 internet satellites into low Earth orbit, a system that would compete with Starlink. While Amazon in December passed a critical early hardware milestone for the antennas, it needs to connect to the network. It has yet to begin producing or launching its satellites. It wouldn't be wrong to see Kuiper's guided vitriol against SpaceX as an indication of Jeff Bezos feeling insecure about SpaceX's success. Other than that, it could be an attempt to get NASA to at least deeply reconsider working with SpaceX and instead offer those contracts to Blue Origin. SpaceX has hit back even harder with a filing of a response arguing that Bezos' company is trying to slow Starlink's progress to help Project Kuiper catch up. The Commission should recognize this delay tactic for what it is, a continuation of efforts by the Amazon family of companies to hinder competitors to compensate for Amazon's failure to make progress of its own, Goldman wrote. He is really going for the jugular vein, isn't he? Goldman also said Amazon has not updated the FCC in nearly 400 days on Kuiper's approach to interference and orbital debris, but took only four days to object to the SpaceX Gen 2 amendment. While Amazon has waited 15 months to explain how its system works, it has lodged objections to SpaceX on average about every 16 days this year, Goldman added. SpaceX CEO has also clapped back himself, recently posting the following on Twitter. Turns out Bezos retired in order to pursue a full-time job filing lawsuits against SpaceX. This is the first shot in a feud that is quickly getting personal even though both men have taken half-hearted digs at each other, most notably in April of this year when Musk made fun of Bezos. However, Bezos went the opposite direction and decided not to respond to provocation with another provocation. On the 16th of September, he tweeted this. Congratulations to Elon Musk and the team on the successful Inspiration4 launch last night. Another step towards a future where SpaceX is accessible to all of us. Musk wrote back with a simple, thank you. We cannot help but note that the respective PR departments are hard at work advising their bosses. The recent break in the fighting with words of praise and encouragement from Jeff Bezos and apt reciprocation from Elon Musk should not be taken at face value. Disputes between the two companies are still very much active and ongoing. As both companies continue to make further and further gains in their respective projects, we can expect objections from either one of them to be filed with the FCC or lawsuits to follow. Is it too dirty currently? Well, probably not but it can definitely become dirtier than ever before thought possible. And if you like this video, you may also enjoy this next video on the incredible software that runs Starlink that is shown in the end screen. See you there.